This is going to be a continuation from the previous video, and here we'll talk about how to solve this second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, and the right-hand side is equal to zero. But this time, the root for the characteristic equation right here, you'll see it's being repeated. So let's check this out. Right here, just like the previous video, when you see y double prime, this corresponds to r squared, right? And y prime corresponds to r, so we have minus 6r, and y corresponds to no r, so we have just plus 9 equal to 0. And for this, we can just go ahead and solve it. We can factor this, right? Once you factor this out, you will get r minus 3 times r minus 3. In another word, we can write this as r minus 3 squared equal to 0. And you see, in this case, we will only have one r value, which is just the past this 3. And let me indicate that right here. This 3, it's being repeated, right? This is the repeated root. 3 and 3. But of course, we can just put on 3, right? And just like in the previous video, once we find out an r value, we know an answer to this, right? And let me just say that that's the building block to the general solution. We know one of the building blocks is going to be e to the 3t, e to the rt, and the r right here is 3. And of course, as I said, this is just one of the possible building blocks to the solution. So let me label this as y1. And also we know a constant multiple will do the work as well, right? So you can put down C1 right here. C1 e to the R3t, like that. Well, does it make sense if I put down y2 equal to C2 e to the 3t? No, because in this case, you see this and that together. First of all, yes, R is being repeated, so I put down 3 and 3. And then I put down C1, which is different than C2, right? But remember, for the overall solution, you put down y, which is equal to y1 plus y2, which is going to be c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the 3t. And notice that they are the slight terms, right? So technically, we can combine them, and you see, we can just say c1 plus c2, and right here is e to the c, uh, 3t. c1 is a constant, plus c2 is a constant. You technically just have another constant you are not finding another solution from here, all right? So the y2 that we have here is actually uh, not a new thing because this is just a constant multiple of that. For the solution to a second order linear differential equation, we have to make sure the building blocks right here, they have to be linearly independent. And I will do another video to illustrate that. But at the moment, this is not exactly right. In fact, this is the same almost the same as that, right? So let me just erase it. So this is how we are going to do it. Instead of putting down v2, instead of putting down y2 is equal to c2 times e to the 3t, well, I don't want this to be just a constant multiple of that. What I would like is, I am going to put down a function, which I will just write down v of t. This is just a function in terms of t, right? And then we multiply by e to the 3t right here. And at the moment, I'm not putting down any constant. First, I just want to say that this is a function times e to the 3t. And now you will see this is not just a constant multiple of that, right? And what we're going to do is, from here, we'll differentiate it once and twice. And we plug it into the original equation. We want to find out what v of t is. This is my goal. Hopefully, it's a nice enough function, and you will see that if you have actually a function here, multiplied by e to the 3t, you can actually find another building block, which is going to be linearly independent than the first one. And this right here has a name. This is called the method of reduction of waters. So let me write this down right here for you guys. This is called the reduction of waters. And I'm going to explain to you guys what this is all about. The idea of doing this is that once we find a building block to this solution, the next one is going to be a function times the first one. And let me just write it down. y2 is going to be, we have to remember, v is a function of time. And right here, for simplicity purpose, let me just put down v instead of v of t like that. And we multiply by the first one that we know, which is e to the 3t. And the strategy is, once we find out what v of t is right here, that will be the second building block to the solution right here. All right, now, 
this is how it will look like for y2 and I'm just going to differentiate this this is the product of two functions so we have to use the product rule so the first I'm going to use is let me keep the first one which is v and multiply by the derivative second which is going to give me e to the 3t times 3 right and let me put down the 3 right here in the front and then we'll be adding we keep the second function which is e to the 3t and we multiply by the derivative of the first right here the derivative of v is just v prime so let's put it down like that all right continue y2 double prime for the second derivative and we have to do the product rule here and the product rule here this is differential equation already so you should not complain about taking the derivative all right anyways right here let me put down 3 v and then we multiply by the derivative of the second which is e to the 3 t times 3 right and then we add the second function which is e to the 3 t and we multiply by the derivative of the first the derivative of 3 v is just going to be 3 v prime okay and then let me just write it down right here i'm going to put down the product rule right here okay so perhaps just like this one this right here is for this and now let's focus on that the derivative of e to the 3t times v prime is going to be first keep the first function which is e to the 3t times the derivative of the second which is v double prime and then we add it with the second function which is v prime times the derivative of the first which is e to the 3t times 3 and let me just put that down in the front so once again you see this right here right give you the derivative right here okay and now what we are going to do is we're just going to drawing all these ingredients into the original right here and let's see what can we do to solve for v and we'll be done so right here let's see first of all i have y double prime which i have to look at this and perhaps we can simplify a little bit because i see that i have the uh, let me just put this down first we have the e to the 3t times v double prime right so let me put this down first as v double prime times e to the 3t and the next one i see that this and that are like terms right so 3 and 3 i will just put down plus 6 and then v prime and then e to the 3t right so that's what we have and next we see this so let me just put it down 3 times 2 which is 9 plus 9 v e to the 3t right so that's the second derivative and technically let me just put a parenthesis next i'm going to put down minus 6 and i have to put down the v prime the y prime i mean which is just this and that so let me put down the v prime first right here so we have this term v prime e to the 3t and then plus 3 v e to the 3t right all right one more 9 times y 9 times that so we have plus 9 times y2 which is v e 3t and altogether this has to be zero all right so is there anything that we can do to cancel things out well right here i have a negative six in front of this parentheses let me just distribute this real quick for you guys and we'll see we'll have negative six v prime e to the 3t negative six times that is negative 18 v e 3t right okay is there anything we can cancel out i hope so and i think so I see that this right here is past the 6 v prime e to the 3t and this is a negative version of that exactly the same but opposite of each other right so this and that cancel each other out and next we see that we have 9 v e to the 3t 9 v e to the 3t these two together give us past the 18 v e to the 3t right this is a negative 18 v e to the 3t so this and that and that cancel each other out isn't it how cool is this right all together we're just left with that <laughs> so we just put it down as v double prime e to the 3t right and we make this equal to zero everything else <laughs> was canceled out already so anyways here we have v double prime e to the 3t is equal to zero and as we know 
e to the 3t is never zero, right? Never zero. Therefore, we must have v prime, or v double prime right here, v double prime to be zero. This is the only condition. We must have the first term being equal to zero. And remember, v is a function of t, right? And now we are talking about the second derivative of v is equal to zero. I have to get to v. We can just integrate twice, right? So let's go ahead and integrate, integrate with respect to t. So let me put down dt, dt. On the left hand side, we end up with v prime, which is going to be integral of zero is just going to be a constant. And in this case, because I will be using c1, c2 right here, right? Let me just put down k1, k2, and so on right here, okay? So let me put down k1 for the first constant that we will get. Integral of zero, we get a constant. Let me just put down k1 for it. And then we go ahead and integrate right here again and still do it with respect to t. So on the left hand side, we end up with v. And on the right hand side, we have k1, that's a constant. But then be sure you multiply by t now, and then you add another constant, which is k2. So you see that the function that will give you second derivative equal to zero is a linear function, right? So this is how v will look like. And now I can tell you guys what y2 is all about. We know y2 is going to be v of t, which is this, right? So I'll just put down k1t plus k2. And then we multiply by e to the 3t. And of course, if you would like, you can just go ahead and distribute e to the 3t into the parentheses. And I will. y2 is equal to k1 t e to the 3t and then plus k2 e 3t, like that, right? Well, guess what? This right here is a constant multiple of e to the 3t, which this is actually just pretty much the same as the first one, right? So this is nothing new. The only thing that's new is t e 3t. I'm just talking about the function part, t e 3t. This part right here, it's a new building block for our solution, all right? So the point of doing this is that in order for us to actually come with uh, uh, the second building block for the solution, we do all this procedure, at the end you find out this is a new thing, right? And altogether, we can finish this up as the following. The overall solution is going to be y, and the first building block is e to the 3t, so let me just put that down, e to the 3t. This is the first building block for the solution to that original differential equation, right? And the second building block is this. We have t e to the 3t. And these two functions, right, if you just look at them separately, they are independent, all right? They are linearly independent, all right? So this is not just a constant multiple, so we actually found something new. And to construct our answer, remember, a constant multiple right here will do the work as well. A constant multiple here will also do the work. So we put on a C1, C2 correspondingly. And at the end, we just add them up together. This is the superposition principle, right? Answer will work for that. Answer will work for that. When you add them up, it will still work for that. This is the answer right here all together. And I'm going to show you guys another uh, video about the reduction of waters and how this will work. And once again, in order for you to use the reduction of waters, you have to first know an answer first, which we did already here. And then based on this procedure, to come up with a second answer, you put on y2 equals to a function phi times the first one. And then you go through a derivative business and you go through all that. At the end, look for the function part. This is going to be the new building block for the solution. And I know what you guys are about to ask me because I can read your mind. Do we have to go through this every single time in order to come up with the second building block? And the answer to that is no. And let me demonstrate how this will work, all right? And let me just summarize this for you guys all together. Whenever we're trying to solve a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients, first we go ahead, you change this to its characteristic equation, and you go ahead and solve for r. If you find yourself that you have r being repeated, the first building block is just going to be e to the rt, which is e to the 3t that we have right here. And the second building block is going to be e to the 3t, 
and you can just multiply by a t right in front, and that will do the work. All right, and this will always work whenever you have constant coefficients. And in fact, this method will also work for higher order as well. And the best way for me to illustrate all that is to show you guys two more examples real quick. So, all right, now let's look at the first one. We have y double prime plus 10y prime plus 25y is equal to zero. And this is all you need to do to solve this differential equation. First, we are gonna just change the y double prime to r squared and the y prime to be r. So we have plus 10r and the y has no r right here, right? So we have just plus 25 equal to zero. And we can just go ahead and factor this out and we'll get r plus five times r plus five, namely r plus five squared, which is equal to zero. And we know r will be negative five. Another one is r is negative five. So <laughs> this is being repeated just like the earlier situation. And from here, once again, I don't have to go through the um, reduction of waters. The reason I showed you that is just to convince you guys you really just multiply by t. And in other situations, you may have to go to a reduction of waters, but whenever we have constant coefficients right here, this is all you have to do. The first building block for the solution is going to be e to the rt, which is negative 5t. The second building block for the solution is going to be e to the negative 5t. And we just have to multiply by a t in front. That's it. And now to construct the whole general solution, we multiply this by a constant, so c1, and we multiply by this by another constant, let's say c2. And we add them up together, and there we have it, y is equal to c1 times e to the negative 5t plus c2, t e to the negative 5t. That's it, all right? So it takes one, two, three, four, four steps. And now let's take a look of this one. It also works for higher order as well. So right here, this is going to be r cubed, and then plus 3r squared plus 3r plus 1 equal to 0. And now you may be wondering, how can I solve for r right here? Well, notice the coefficient. This is 1, 3, 3, 1. And then the power goes down by 3, 2, 1, and then no r, right? So in this case, this is just going to be a binomial expansion when the power is equal to 3. This is the same as saying r plus 1 to the third power equal to 0. If you multiply this out, you will get this back, all right? And the point right here is to show you guys how to solve the differential equation. So let me just continue, all right? So here, to solve r, we know r will be negative 1, but technically, it's repeated as well, right? This is repeating three times, right? Negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. But let me just write this down. It is being repeated. All right, now, in this case, the first building block for the um, solution is going to be e to the negative 1 times t. So it's negative t, right? Negative 1t. This is the first building block for the solution. The second one is going to be e to the negative t, which is pretty much the same at the moment. But for this one, just like how we did it earlier, we are going to multiply by a t right here. And they will be linearly independent. For the third one, it is going to be still e to the negative t. But I multiply by t already, right? In this case, take a guess. What do we have to multiply? I hope you say t squared, and if you did, you are correct. This right here is t squared. First, second, and third. These are the building blocks for the solutions for that. And of course, constant multiples time, so c1, c2, c3, and then superposition time, so plus, plus, and then at the end, you put on y equal to, and at the end, box time. That's it.